Welcome back. Now, Defence Minister Andrew Muchecha says that government has made the plans to repatriate more remains of freedom fighters who died in exile. The remains of some who died in Zambia and Zimbabwe have been repatriated already. However, Muchecha says the process was lengthy and complex. Uh, she says this is a momentous occasion and it is quite remarkable for the ANC and the PAC as most of the freedom fighters had died in exile. Now, to get a more historical aspect with regards to this, the, the reason as to why this repatriation has to happen and why it's actually happening within Heritage Month and also at the same time the importance of the what these freedom fighters played in taking on the apartheid government. I'd like to welcome Dr. Tsepo Moloi who's from the University of Johannesburg's Department of History. Dr. Moloi, good day. Thank you so much for joining us here on News in Focus on Hilal TV. Good afternoon. Thank you very much no, for it's inviting me. It's an absolute pleasure. Dr. Ben, let's start off, of course, with the importance of these repatriations, given the significance of the history of our country. I think it's, uh, it's very important and um, uh, apt that this is ha happening now at a larger scale, because uh, if you remember a um, few years uh, ago, a few of our former uh, liberation struggle heroes uh, 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 remains were brought back into the country. For example, uh, uh, the former Secretary General of the South African uh, Communist Party, um, uh, uh, Moses Gordana and uh, J.B. Marx were brought, uh, brought back uh, into the country after years uh, being lying in, uh, in Moscow, the Russia. So now with this uh, large scale, I mean, 49, it's a very uh, uh, commendable step. And uh, hopefully, uh, uh, as we move forward, more remains we brought, brought back in, into the country. Mm -hmm. Dr. Molloy, SADC nations, of course, played quite a huge role in, you know, allowing the uh, the exiled freedom fighters to be there and, and really set up base camps. Uh, you've seen the lectures that were given. Uh, you've seen the, the documentaries, various documentaries with regards to that. Uh, it's not just only SADC, but it's also, you know, you've mentioned Russia being one of them when it was the then Soviet Union uh, and other, you know, countries within the global south. But I want to focus on SADC and how important were these SADC nations in assisting freedom fighters in setting up camps to combat uh, the apartheid government. Uh, we talk about, uh, you know, Zimbabwe just when it gained its uh, independence from uh, Great Britain with the then late Robert Mugabe. Talk to us about the, the importance of SADC. I think uh, uh, countries within the region played a very, very important role uh, in the liberation struggle of South Africa. Uh, we, without uh, uh, their, um, uh, that role, I don't think uh, we would have uh, gained our independence as quickly as we did. Well, I mean, it's uh, close to about 40 years or so uh, after apartheid had uh, come into power. But um, if you look, look at, at um, countries such as uh, Mozambique, mm. where we had um, a, a basis, uh, uh, for the ANC, uh, you take uh, uh, Lesotho, where we had PAC and ANC, been in Botswana, uh, Swaziland, um, um, Zambia, if, if, uh, uh, so uh, Angola, uh, uh, where ANC at its uh, uh, some of its uh, uh, military camps. Um, so these countries, uh, uh, the role and the welcoming that they gave to the liberation movement. It's, it's very imperative in the liberation struggle of, of, of this country. And I must also add that they paid uh, uh, heavily mm. for accommodating the liberation struggles, uh, uh, liberation movements of South Africa. Uh, I mean, most of these countries, uh, uh, I can't think of any, but almost all mm. were, were targeted by the apartheid regime. Mm. I mean, you take, for example, Lesotho, 1982, we had the, the raid there where quite a number of South Africans, but also Basotho nationals were killed. Again, Botswana, 1985. Uh, 
I mean, Mozambique in 1981, Matola. So, I mean, they they did not only uh, uh, accommodate and provide support, both moral and and and, and otherwise, in, in uh, to the liberation movements, but they also paid. Uh, 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 heavily uh, for uh, accommodating this liberation mm. movement. Dr. Molloy, this is something that's going to be very close to you as a, as a lecturer and as an academic. Uh, uh, the modern day student would look at apartheid and say, okay, it was just, you know, Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Oliver Tambo, um, Ahmad Katrada, and they were like the forefront of the liberation movement. But there's obviously not enough history with regards to the freedom fighters that were stationed in these various parts of the SADC region or the global south. Now, how important is this piece of history in educating modern day students or pupils, whether it's tertiary or, you know, a uh, 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 higher education, about liberation movements, about the importance, not just the ANC or the PAC, but even parties like the Frelimo or the ZANU-PF and so on, to understand where liberation movements come from and its importance. I think it's very uh, important and uh, uh, imperative that uh, um, this history is first uh, 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 Documented and uh, preserved. Um, our 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 students uh, 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 they need to know this history uh, for quite a number of reasons. But one in the main is that the liberation struggle and the democracy that we are uh, enjoying today did not come free. Uh, quite a number of people. Uh, both leaders and the rank and file um, sacrificed a lot, and some paid uh, the penultimate uh, price, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as we uh, observe now with the rep repatriation of the 49 uh, 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 liberation struggle heroes. Um, but it also uh, says to us that the kind of history that we need to uh, tell now and, and, and document is the kind of history that is not only about South Africa as a, 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 an individual country, mm. but it's a history that uh, brings together uh, the the regional history of of Africa. Uh, in this case, a SADC. Uh, because as we uh, uh, when you started to spoke about uh, 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 these uh, African countries in the region opening up. Uh, they are they are countries for for liberation movements uh, to 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 settle in, um, and, and, and 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 take up the liber the struggle against the apartheid system. Uh, so the, the the history that I I think that we we now are going to have, uh, and this has started already, but with more repatriations like. It's, it's happening now, is that we're going to have a history that it, it, it's regional, mm. you know. It's not a, a history that it, it focuses on a particular country, which is important, but it's also important for us to show this uh, 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 solidarity between different African countries uh, in their fight against uh, independence. And, and this goes back to uh, 1963, when the OAU, uh, which is now known as uh, African Union, was, was formed. That was the idea to say we, 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 we are a continent uh, that is fighting for the independence of all countries uh, in, in Africa. So. People moving from uh, first to move out of South Africa into these the neighboring countries, it's it's important on its own because it says it shows this solidarity. Mm. Uh, so I think that kind of history it's very 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 key for us to start to research and document so that young students, uh, today's students who are doing history, political sciences, and and and, and so forth within the humanities will know. Uh, uh, about the history of the liberation struggle, but also know the kind of roles that other countries played in the liberation struggle of South Africa. More so, just to add uh, uh, to conclusions, that even South Africans themselves who went outside, they also played a role in assisting other African countries to gain their liberty. Uh, 
uh, liberation uh, 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 during the 70s and 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 and, and, and earlier, uh, earlier earlier periods uh, as well. Dr. Moroy, we've got about four minutes. I'm going to try and get two minutes per question. Uh, liberation movements, uh, and, and you see that here in South Africa, generally people, the, the, many of the voters, and we saw that in the elections, would say the ANC still has that liberation movement uh, attire to them. They're not maybe in tune with the, the politics of the modern day. Uh, the peop, uh, citizens of Zimbabwe would say the same thing with regards to the ZANU-PF, that they've maybe lost touch with regards to the modern day political environment. Now, how do liberation movements make maintain their heritage as a liberation movement, but also at the same time allow fate to be engraved in this modern day political environment? Um, it is, it is, yes, I agree. And then it is very important, I think, that um, liberation movements maintain that heritage, that history, uh, so that people know where we, we come from and how far uh, 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 to where we, we, we finally uh, arrived to uh, gain independence. But uh, in the same breath, it is also important because now t times have changed. Hmm. We went beyond the liberation struggle. Uh, now, part the liberation movements came back, uh, 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 won their independence, and they are now ascended to power in uh, in order to govern in democratic states. So that 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 distinction it has to be there. Uh, it has to be visible uh, in the sense that you're moving from one uh, 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 perspective of fighting for liberation and then to the another uh, uh, perspective of governing. Mm. Now, governing means that you are governing on behalf of everyone, even those that uh, were, were your adversaries uh, uh, earlier on. So I think that it, it, it's a tricky uh, 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 situation, but it's something that we've seen uh, post-independence uh, that most of these debate movements had to uh, uh, start doing. Uh, so, some It's uneven. Some have done very well, some not. Uh Doc, just one question I need to get with you. Are artifacts, uh, how much more effort does South Africa's government, along with SADAC, push for artifacts to be returned back to the respective countries which were taken away during colonialism? One minute, uh, Dr. Malloy. At, 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 uh, thanks for that question. I think it's very, very important. Uh, so to get all those artifacts to come back uh, to uh, our country and other African countries, because it's the basis mm. uh, that we as historians and other academics start using to document our histories. But it's also a pride to mm. show case what we had before colonization, uh, 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 had owned before colonization, then that will bring closure to this idea of colonialism and to say that even though uh, now that we've got our independence, but we also have uh, uh, all our treasures back. Doc Malloy, thank you so much for joining us here on News in Focus on Hilal TV. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. That's uh, Dr. Tsepo Molloy, uh, University of Johannesburg's Department of History. Well, we've come to the end of News in Focus from myself for Hospital and the rest of the team in Johannesburg. Shazakla so much for joining us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.